In this video, I'm going to be showing you how I made this jacket from scratch, from pattern drafting to cutting on the fabric to sewing and final finishes. So if you're interested, then keep on watching. Hello guys, welcome and welcome back again to my channel. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, be sure to subscribe if you like what I do and also leave a thumbs up if you like the video. All right, so we're getting started. As you can see right here, I have my basic bodies pattern traced out already. I have a video on this already on the channel, so I won't be going over it again. So this video is not going to be too long. So I'm just bringing in this basic bodies pattern that I made in that video. And I'm just trying to show you so you guys see that it's exactly the same thing that I traced out. The only difference here is that I'm a bit bigger now. So I add, uh, I made it more to my size. And also this blue portion right here, which is the allowance that I added just because of this bust that. It's not going to be part of it so I didn't trace this blue portion as part of it so basically I just traced out the edges of this basic bodies without the blue portion keep in mind that the waist dart is still part of this but we are just not going to be holding it in in the um, jacket all right so the first thing i'm going to be doing is to draw out a shoulder line you know that on the basic bodies pattern we have a waistline the bust line and the shoulder line right so i'm referring to that shoulder line so i'm going to be um, recreating that line now if you don't know what i mean that means you need to go watch that basic bodies pattern video that i have it's very detailed okay you are going to understand if you go watch it all right so after drawing out that my shoulder line so from this shoulder line now i'm going to be coming down by five inches you can go down by six inches here you can go down by seven inches it, do, it all depends on what you want so next from this center front line i'm going to also be coming outward by five inches again this is my choice this is going to determine how wide or how slim your collar is going to be eventually or the fall of the jacket. Okay, so my two points meet in this same point right here. So what I'm going to do now is to connect from my shoulder here all the way to that point and from that point all the way down here. So once that has been connected, then this initial neckline and the center front is no longer needed. Next thing I'm going to do is to add my seam allowance around it. So I did that. I added half inch seam allowance all around it except the hemline where I added 1.5 inch seam allowance. Alright, and I went ahead and cut it out. This is what it looks like after cutting it out and the front panel is completed. <laughs> Alright, so next we need to draft the back panel. And similarly, I went ahead and traced my back panel out like this. And I'm just going to point out the little things that are different basically the only different thing is the zipper allowance okay so as you can see by the time i folded in my zipper allowance everything else looks exactly the same but you should take note here that if you watch that basic body pattern video you see that i came in by half of an inch along my waistline to have that kind of curve at the back so i traced out that curvy line as you can see my center back is not entirely straight so that's what i did okay and next thing i'm going to do now is to simply add my similar ones around it this jacket is so simple and very beautiful so i challenge you to make it if all you've been doing is just watching my video and not recreating i challenge you to make this one all right so as you can see i added my seam allowance around it i also i'm also going to add half inch along my center back i'm a little bit short of paper but that's okay i'm going to fix that later so just add your seam allowance all around and then go ahead and cut it out so i'm also letting you know that the dart is also included in my pattern it's just that i'm not marking it out but it's included in that pattern while sewing as well i'm not going to hold the dart so just keep on watching so you know what i'm talking about all right so go ahead and cut out the pattern and after cutting it out this is what i have and next thing i'm going to do is to draft out my facing and i'm going to draft facing for only the back panel so here from the neckline downward i'm taking four inches i guess i took four inches actually you can use whatever measurement you want the facing 
you can just do you when it comes to facing you can make it bigger or smaller so then i'm going to draw a curved line that goes towards my arm o this way and i just took i guess one inch downward from the arm o but it doesn't really matter actually so this is the curve after sketching it with my pencil this portion right here is going to be the facing so i went ahead and placed a fresh pattern paper and i'm simply going to trace that out all right so I also trace out my similar ones because of course the facing also needs a similar one so this is what it looks like and i use my marker to bring out the shape as you can see then i'm just simply going to cut it out so after cutting it out this is what it looks like and you can see it's just like the upper part of my back panel so and for my sleeve i drafted the sleeve in a different video i've uploaded it already on the channel is my previous upload so check it out i'll post the link of it at the end of this video or you can find dummy dimension bishop sleeve on youtube so let's move on to the cutting of the fabrics here is the fabric i'm going to be using for the calf and this is a ribbed jersey fabric this is what it looks like it usually comes in this kind of a folded kind of thing so here is my cuff pattern i'm folding it into two and placing it on the pattern like this tracing it out and then i'm going to be cutting it out and i'm going to be cutting another one as well for my second sleeve so after cutting this is what i have and for my sleeve i also went ahead and cut that on my african print fabric i cut out two pieces and the next thing I cut out is facing for the front or let's just say lining for the front because it covers the entire front panel. So it's the same shape as my front and the main fabric for the front as well. I cut out two pieces for the red fabric, which is the lining for the front. I also cut out two pieces and for my back panel, I use my African print fabric and I also cut out two pieces. My calf, I cut out two pieces and the facing as well. I cut out two pieces so next we are moving on to sewing and right here i have my back panel right sides facing each other and i pin them together at the center back then i'm going to go ahead and stitch on that center back all the way and by the time i open it up i'll have something like this then i'm going to bring my front panel and place it with it like this front uh right sides facing each other then i'm going to join both of them together at the shoulder up next i'm working on the inner and i have my facing right sides facing each other i'm going to be joining along the center back this way by the time i open it up after joining it will look like this and once that is done i'm bringing in the front lining and i'm going to be combining it with that back facing right sides facing each other and joining along the shoulder as well and once that is done it's going to look something like this it looked something like this all right and also the main fabric also looks exact same way except that the back of the main fabric is complete while the inner has just um a facing along the back all right so we just need to combine both of them together and watch how i'm going to do that so i placed my main fabric right sides facing up on my table then i am laying the inner fabric on top of it right side facing it matching them together and i pin it together as you can see and i'm going to go ahead and stitch along this pinned area all the way like so so that's from the hemline through the center front to the neck line down to the other center front so once that is done it looks something like this and the next thing i did was i gave it a notch in all those curvy and sharp corner area you know so that by the time you turn it inside out it comes out nice and sharp so once you're done notching go ahead and flip it to the right side making sure that i poke out this corner so that it can come out nice and sharp and once that is done i went ahead and gave it a good good press and after pressing the next thing to do is to flip um flip it this way put the front and back together basically right sides facing each other and i pinned it down then i'm going to go ahead and stitch the side seam all the way down on both sides and once that is done this is what i have as you can see i overlocked all my raw edges so it comes out nice and clean and yeah i forgot to tell you that you shouldn't stitch all the way down as you can see i stopped at where my hemming allowance stops so that i can finish up the hem this way so i folded in the hem i recommend you iron it after folding then i reached out to it 
through the armhole grab it that way and then pin it together if you want to then go ahead and stitch it all together that way and by the time you bring it back out it's going to be nicely finished all right so you're going to be repeating the same thing on the other side and once i was done with doing that then i'm going to just fold the back panel once all right because i have it overlocked so I fold it once and I'm, I'm just simply going to hem that part so that way it's kind of nice you can just hem it with a top stitch but because i just want it to be nice you know how we roll on this channel because i just want it to be you know clean and professional looking i decided to um use a hemming gum to hem that back panel so once that is done it came out looking all clean at the hemline without having to see stitches there both the front and back hemline all right and the next thing to do now is to insert our sleeve right i have my first sleeve right here and i'm going to run gather stitch all along the down part like so after running the gather stitch it looks like this next you can go ahead and pull the gathers at this point or you can stitch it together first before pulling the gathers the choice is yours so that was what i did i went ahead and stitched it together right sides facing each other along this side first you can see i've done that and now i am going to pull my gathers if you don't know how to do gathers maybe you can watch my gather skirt tutorial i kind of went a little bit more in depth on how to do it so after doing the gathers i have this i checked out the measurement and i make sure that it's equal to my wrist circumference so next thing i'm going to do now is to fold my cuff this way right sides facing each other pin it together and i am going to stitch on my half inch seam allowance all the way down and once that is done it looks like this and next i'm going to fold it into two of course i did the same thing to the second one obviously <laughs> so then i'm going to fold it this way wrong sides facing each other then it's gonna come out looking like this and just because i was feeling it i just put it on my wrist to see what's going on it looks so cute <laughs> so yeah and then it's time to attach it to the sleeve itself i'm matching it together making sure that the seam Part is matched together with the seam of my sleeve and I'm just simply pinning that all around and mind you I am pinning you know the cuff is folded into two right so I'm pinning both of them together all at once just because I'm going to be overlocking the raw edges so I don't have to be you know I don't have to mind that the raw edges is going to be inside because I overlocked it anyway anyway so I matched the seams together as you can see pinned it together I uh, pinned the opposite side, of course, first, so that it's, the ruffle can be even and distribute um, evenly across the sleeve. All right, once that is done, I went ahead and stitched it down and repeated the same thing to the second one, overlocked the raw edges, and now it's time to insert it into my jacket. I have pinned the first sleeve, so I'm just going to use the second one to show you. So I have my sleeve on the right side, then I'm putting that right side into the right side of my jacket this way. And similarly, I'm matching the side seam to the seam of the sleeve, pinning it down, and then I have a notch on my sleeve, all right? I'm matching that notch, which is, the notch is of course the center point, right? Then I'm matching that notch to my shoulder point okay so that way i'm able to fit my sleeve into my armhole easily and the final thing to do which is optional is to kind of tack this part down by hand you can just put it you know stitch it down by hand it's optional you don't have to do it anyway so and once that is done that's basically it for the jacket it's so simple so classy elegant at the same time you know it's something you can dress up and dress down with if you like this video please hit the like button please don't go away with my like share out this video to whoever might need it you can see how it turned out so gorgeous beautiful try this out i challenge you to do it and tag me on instagram post on our facebook and you know just have fun sewing and i hope to see you in my next video bye